So a couple years back I bought the Canon EOS 300 because I wanted to get a film camera that would give me a sharper, cleaner film uh, photos than I was getting with my manual Pentax ME Super. Now at the time I needed those higher quality images because I wanted to make a lot based on the film stock that I was using at the time and I needed high quality images to sample the colours. However I very quickly became fond of having some modern luxuries that the EOS 300 afforded me, in particular the autofocus. And since then the EOS 300 really has become my go to uh, camera for film photography. In many ways I think that more modern film cameras are really good cameras for someone who is looking to get into film photography because it will be a lot more familiar to someone who has only ever shot digital. Firstly unlike older SLRs the EOS 300 pretty much takes care of loading film by itself. All you need to do is pull the leader out and drop it onto the take up spool and when you close the back of the camera it will automatically unwind all the film onto the take up spool. In addition, there is a metal strip on the cartridge that the camera can read and it'll use this to set the number of exposures and the ASA of the film. Unlike a manual SLR, the EOS 300 counts down rather than up and it advances the film back towards the cartridge, effectively rewinding as you shoot, which is nice in case you accidentally open the back of the camera. Now, this isn't really a big problem that you'll have if, if, if you shoot film for any length of time. You can adjust the ISO in case you want to push or pull the film as well. Now obviously there's a motor involved, so this camera is going to need batteries, particularly CR2 batteries. Now disposable CR2 batteries are really expensive and wasteful, so I bought some um, reusable ones, which also last a lot longer, which is nice. Now obviously it's not difficult to load or unload a camera, so the main reason that I like this camera is the EF mount. This camera has an EF mount, being an EOS camera, uh, which means that I can use all my modern EF lenses with this camera, and it autofocuses really well with them. It's pretty surreal being able to use an old film camera with my modern 150 to 600 millimeter um, lens for wildlife photography. And having a fast and relatively accurate uh, autofocus means that you can use this camera almost like a point and shoot, which I find a really enjoyable way to shoot, especially if you're just documenting life. I have had instances, unfortunately, where it's missed focus, but I think I've more or less fixed this issue uh, by selecting the center autofocus point. To be clear, I do really like the split prism focusing system of the Pentax, but it makes focusing a lot slower and uh, especially focusing and recomposing. With the EOS 300, I simply half press the shutter like I would do on any modern camera. My second favourite feature of this camera is the metering. Now obviously the best way to meter any scene is going to be with a dedicated light meter. However, there are instances very often where you're going to have to rely on the internal metering. And the internal metering on the EOS 300, my experience with it so far, is that it is excellent. Like a modern DSLR, you also get this scale that tells you how many stops under or overexposed you are, which is very useful when you're trying to change exposure quickly. And it's also very useful when you're trying to under or overexposed for any reason, say you have a bright background, a dark subject, or you're shooting in the backlight. The Pentax on the other hand simply has a light in the viewfinder that tells you whether you're overexposed or underexposed, uh, as well as your shutter speed, but it doesn't give you any indication as to where correct exposure is or how many stops over or under you are. So finding it and then adjusting the exposure can be slow, especially with the, the buttons that are used to change the shutter on the Pentax. In addition, the metering on the Pentax isn't as good, and there are times where I was really not sure how the photo would end up looking. Now, if I am faced with a tricky exposure situation like strong backlight, uh, fortunately C41 color film is very tolerant of overexposure, so I'll always lean towards overexposing rather than underexposing, especially if I'm using the internal metering. C41 very quickly loses detail in underexposed areas, but it can retain a lot of details even in areas that are quite badly overexposed. Lastly, one thing that I really love about this camera is the form factor. Obviously it is very familiar to me as someone who's used DSLRs, and it means that changing exposure, uh, shutter or aperture is very quick, and you also have an LCD screen that lets you check your aperture, shutter, and autofocus point at a glance. And all of these little quality of life features really make the EOS 300 a pleasure to use, and when you're just documenting life or doing street photography, um, or really any form of photography for that matter, I find that the EOS 300 gives you a clean image with that timeless aesthetic of film. However, there are still a lot of reasons that I still use my Pentax ME Super. For the most part, I use the ME Super when I want more 
stylized photography with a lot of scratches and grunge. Yeah, the sort of artifacts that are really, you can only get on film because it's a physical negative. When I'm using a high grain film stock like Ilford Delta 3200, uh, I do like to use that with the Pentax rather than the EOS 300 because it's so grainy and I feel like the scratches and the grunge add to the image. Whereas with the EOS 300, it's just a little bit too clean for how much grain there is. Most of my favorite film photography has actually probably been done on the Pentax Emi Super with the Delta 3200 film, but I have had the Pentax for a lot longer than the EOS 300. Overall, I think that if you are looking to get into film and you have a lot of EF lenses, there's really no reason not to get an EOS 300. These cameras are really cheap at the moment. I've seen them for under 20 pounds consistently on eBay. And it's nice to have the option to get clean film photography where the aesthetic of the image is defined more by the film stock than the camera that the photo comes from. As well, it's just nice to have a camera that's as easy and straightforward to use as any DSLR. So anyway, this was just a quick video that I wanted to share my experience with the EOS 300 because I haven't made a video in a while. And I've been using this camera quite a lot and really enjoyed using it. Um, so I hope that this video was useful and I will see you later.